Hello there guys, welcome to another of my live videos and today I'm just be officially um, updating you on some more current, uh, transfer rumours um, and gossip so uh, there is uh, lots to negotiate um, on this uh, video today going to give you the latest news um, about Romelu Lukaku also going to give you a bit more additional um, information um, in regards uh, to Harry Maguire and of course as always there's also lots of um, other things uh, to currently uh, talk about but we'll currently uh, start with uh, Romelu Lukaku so we do know Romelu Lukaku um, is obviously you know, not part um, of the Norway uh, squad so obviously you know, he hasn't uh, travelled uh, to Norway with the rest of the 26 uh, man, uh, Manchester United uh, squad. Uh, potentially, I think Manchester United um, have set uh, Romelu Lukaku um, a transfer uh, deadline and reportedly, you know, we've given him um, until Thursday, you know, to uh, engineer um, his move away uh, from Manchester United. Uh, potentially, I think, you know, Lukaku you know, will be uh, leaving uh, the club uh, this week. Um, obviously, we do know that Lukaku um, has obviously you know, not made um, an appearance um, on pre-season tour, but actually, you know, he did travel, you know, to Australia with us. He also travelled to, you know, Singapore um, and that with us. But obviously, you know, allegedly, you know, he hadn't been killed uh, playing because he had some kind of a uh, minor um, injury, so I do believe that he, according to Oligan and Solskjaer that he, that he had uh, some kind of uh, ankle problem. But with him, you know, not playing in these pre season games, you know, that's obviously you no know, fueled more speculation and um, in regards uh, to his uh, long term uh, future. But I did say, you know, if we can sell Romelu Lukaku, it would be very beneficial for Manchester United, it'll also be a very beneficial uh, for Lukaku um, himself because obviously, you know, analysing it, you know, Lukaku um, is surplus to requirements um, at the football club, and obviously, you know, since Oligan and Solskjaer got recommended in, obviously, we do know that Oligan. And Solskjaer's uh, first choice preference has been Marcus Rashford ahead of uh, Romelu Lukaku, and obviously we do know that you know Lukaku has become um, infuriated um, about this. Obviously, it reported out the other week saying that Oligan and Solskjaer um, had held uh, talks with Romelu Lukaku and actually you know, wanted him to stay um, at the club uh, for one more season. But Romelu Lukaku has confirmed you know he does uh, want to uh, leave uh, Manchester United. But look, look at our attacking line now. You know we've got likes of Daniel James. You know we've got Martial. You know we've got Rashford. You know we've got Mason Greenwood. You know he's been assured you know more playing time uh, this season because obviously you know he's done well in pre season so far but he's going to get promoted into the first team uh, this season as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, as uh, currently uh, confirmed um, but, and you know Mason Green was what 17 years of age and you know he's the upcoming future but I do believe he can succeed at Manchester United and obviously you know you've got Chong on that so obviously you know Romelu Lukaku is going to find it very hard you know to uh, get him um, in that mix so I think it'll be beneficial for his career you know if he does now obviously you know uh, leave uh, Manchester United but reportedly we've imposed a deadline on him and we've given to Thursday you know to engineer a move away uh, from the football club but he's not going to be playing in Norway because he hasn't uh, travelled uh, he hasn't, uh, you know, travelled uh, to, you know, Norway um, as a uh, Romelu Lukaku. Matteo Diamond also, you know, hasn't uh, travelled uh, to Norway. Also, you know, he's been relentlessly, you know, linked to a move away from the football club because Matteo Diamond surface two requirements. I do believe also Sanchez um, hasn't, you know, currently uh, travelled uh, to Norway. Uh, Sanchez obviously, you know, not yet played um, on pre-season, just like Diamond hasn't. Uh, I think Sanchez, you know, has actually, you know, uh, been injured, hasn't he? Um, but um, yeah, so there's a couple, you know, that haven't, you know, currently uh, travelled uh, to Norway. But like I said, you know, we do know that there's been a lot of talk about Lukaku uh, going uh, to Inter Milan. Um, obviously, you know, Inter Milan have basically, you know, been in for Lukaku uh, for the entirety of um, the summer. And Lukaku, you know, spoken about um, supposed to uh, move uh, to Inter Milan uh, for the majority of um, the summer. But I do believe for quite some time, um, our valuation um, has seen to be a stumbling block of Lukaku make his proposed move to Inter Milan. Obviously, recent reports have indicated out now saying that uh, Juventus um, have entered uh, the race. Uh, but, you know, we said, we've basically said, you know, one around 75 or 80 million pounds you know some reports have indicated out that we want a figure near that 90 million pound mark obviously we initially got Lukaku uh, from Everton a couple of years ago for around 75 million pounds obviously there were several add-ons included um, in the deal of 15 million which did potentially you know, rise it to 90 million pounds and obviously you know he's our second most expensive sign and I do believe you know we're probably um, overpaid uh, for uh, Lukaku but obviously you know I do I think Inter Milan uh, are under uh, financial fair play uh, restrictions I do believe Inter Milan have been in negotiations uh, with Manchester United uh, for quite a uh, Sometimes and I still believe you know talks are ongoing now over uh, coming to um, an agreement um, on a fee. Um, obviously reported out uh, last week. Uh, obviously you know Inter Milan had a 54 million pound bid turned down because obviously you now that figure um, is too um, insufficient because we want around 75 or 80 million. So we're looking to recoup the money that we did pay from a couple of years ago. Maybe we've been orchestrating on gaining um, a little bit um, of a profit. But obviously you know Inter Milan have been you know trying to um, offload a couple of their players you know to help them generate funds you know to meet that 75 or 80 million pound valuation. But Inter Milan have currently you know struggled uh, to do this. Um, obviously, we do know Antonio Conte has identified Romelu Lukaku as his number one target. Um, obviously, you know, flexing back a couple of years ago when Antonio Conte was the manager of Chelsea at that point, and um, one day Romelu Lukaku, but his close move to Chelsea never happened. He also, you know, he actually you know, came to uh, Manchester United um, instead. 
But like I said, you know, in Milan, um, I'm under a financial fair player restrictions. But, you know, Lukaku did describe Antonio Conte as one of the best managers um, in the world. So I think, you know, Lukaku is keen on playing um, under uh, Antonio Conte's guidance because probably believes he will flourish um, under uh, Antonio Conte's guidance. Uh, we do know also in Milan um, have inquired about getting Lukaku on a two-year loan with then the obligation to buy. But again, Manchester United didn't entertain this offer because we're only willing to uh, let him go um, on a permanent uh, deal. But I initially said anyway, I know for the majority of the summer, you know, we have been mainly, you know, focusing um, on the incomings. But I do believe, you know, we have to sell players, you know, to help us generate funds and, you know, rebuild uh, the squad more. You know, Solskjaer has spoken to the vast majority um, of our players uh, throughout with the course um, of this summer. And he's very adamant, you know, that we don't uh, need to uh, sell uh, many players. But Solskjaer did say, you know, there has been a lot of speculation about players coming in and about, you know, where players are currently um, going. Obviously, so far this summer, you know, we spent £68 million on Daniel James and Wam Saka. And we have seen glimpses of what good signings, you know, they've proven to be so far because they've both, you know, done a fantastic um, in pre-season. And I think both players, you know, have got, um, I think both players, you know, will succeed at Manchester United. You know, with Daniel James, like I keep saying, you know, he's still a prospect and, you know, he needs uh, time uh, to develop. And with Anwan Bissaka, you know, you know, Van Wan Bissaka, you know, he only made his debut um, in February of last year. You know, I think he's got all the ingredients required to become a huge success at Manchester United. And I do believe Van Wan Bissaka, you know, can be our um, fullback uh, for the next uh, decade. But like I said, we've got, you know, there's still areas where we're lacking. You know, we need to get an experienced centre half in. You know, we do need to get a couple of new additions in that midfield. Uh, you know, regardless of what happens with Paul Popper, we're also in a search uh, for the right winner. But if Lukaku leaves the football club, you know, we are definitely going to need a replacement for him. And obviously, you know, we've had quite a few, we've, we've got quite a few players in our agenda, you know, who could replace uh, Romelu Lukaku um, at the football club. But like I said, he is surplus two requirements now um, at Manchester United. But, you know, Inter Milan have been in for him uh, quite uh, some time. Uh, Lukaku's agent, Federico Pastorelli, you know, I think he was in Milan uh, last week and he's he's held quite a few uh, negotiations with Inter Milan. And Federico Pastorelli did say that Inter Milan um, are desperate to sign uh, Lukaku. But, you know, effective back was it over a month ago. Now, it actually said Lukaku had agreed the personal terms of Inter Milan. It also allegedly said that he agreed a contract uh, worth around 180 grand a week. But no fee um, is yet, you know, come to um, any kind um, of agreement but Inter Milan have been you know trying to um, offload um, a couple of uh, their players but Lukaku definitely you know, wants to uh, make uh, the move uh, to uh, you know uh, the Serie um, A but he reported out a couple of days ago uh, obviously you know when the Manchester United squad returned uh, a couple of days ago this was when you know we returned from China you know when we were you know to return uh, to Manchester obviously you know Lukaku Got got to the Manchester airport and immediately, you know, boarded a flight uh, to Belgium, you know, to obviously, you know, go meet up with his agent in Belgium, you know, to discuss a potential move to Inter Milan. But we do know recent reports have been coming out. I think in last at least last three um, or four days, saying that now that Juventus um, have entered the race, so maybe Juventus are orchestrating on, you know, hijacking um, Inter Milan's move uh, for Lukaku. And reportedly, you know, Juventus are willing to offer Paul Dybala in a swap deal uh, for uh, Romelu Lukaku. I would uh, take this here with a pinch um, of salt. Actually, recently now Sky Sports have indicated. Out saying that Paul De Bala now wants to remain uh, loyal to Juventus, even though a lot of reports came out uh, last week saying that you know Paul De Bala had held, uh, you know he'd held. Um you know, negotiations with Maurizio Sarri and it reportedly said he changed um, his transfer stance and he did initially say, you know, he was uh, considering, you know, leaving uh, Juventus and obviously, you know, he's been one of the players that Manchester United have been in uh, in for uh, for quite uh, some time. You know, Paul De Bale, I think he would be a good adequate uh, replacement for Romelu Lukaku. Um, I think Lukaku was talking uh, about um, a move to Juventus um, a while back because I do believe at one point, it's a while ago now, his actual uh, first pro choice preference was Juventus because I think, you know, I think if, for me... Lukaku's preferred destination, in my opinion, you know, would be. I think what would be more beneficial for him would be a move to Juventus because I think Juventus, you know, would be able to guarantee him success. You know, Vincent Milan, you know, would, uh, I'd be very skeptical about Vincent Milan, you know, guarantee, guarantee him uh, success. But I think he was excited about the prospect, you know, of linking up with Cristiano Ronaldo um, and that in the Juventus team at one point uh, was Romelu Lukaku. But uh, I think it'd be beneficial for us, you know, Lukaku going to Juventus, you know, Dybala coming to Manchester United because I think Dybala, you know, would bring us uh, them goals uh, that we do uh, currently um, need. And you know, we lack goals there last season because obviously look, analysing it last season you know, we didn't uh, we lacked that pace last season this is why I wasn't scoring enough goals you know this is why I wasn't that good in the attack of the pitch you know this is why I wasn't ruthless enough um, in front of a goal but already you know we've played four games in pre-season you know uh, four wins out of four you know nine goals scored and only one goal conceded and already I can see the vast improvements in um, our current uh, team you know we, we, we you know we've got more pace um, up front now you know you've got Daniel James that's got electrifying pace you've got Rashford that's got good pace you've got Martial that's got good pace so I think we look much 
we look much better in that attacking line. But I still believe we need a bit more experience in the team, especially um, in our attacking our line. And I do believe Paul De Bala would be the right solution. I think he'd link up well with the likes of you know Rashford and Martial. I think he'd blend in our attacking line really, really well. Even though you know Paul De Bala has never ever you know played them um, in the Premier League, um, obviously. But he's only a what 25 years of age, De Bala. You know he's been at Juventus uh, for years. Um, Obviously, I think in all competitions he scored 78 goals in 182 games, so he's got that proven pedigree as a proven uh, goal scorer. Um, obviously, I think Juventus did pay around 40 million euros for him from Palma uh, back in uh, 2015. Uh, so he has been at Juventus four years, and he's four years in Turin. You know, he's won the Serie A four times, and he's won three Coppa Italians. He's also been named in the Serie A uh, team of the year on three um, occasions um, as Debal, and I think he's under contract with Juventus um, until 2022. Uh, it cost you a substantial amount, you know. The ball, you know, discarding him as being part of any swap deal because I was reading a lot of reports about the ball last week, and it, you know, basically said that Juventus, you know, would reportedly sell the ball as long as you know we were willing to meet what they're demanding. And it did initially say, you know, they wanted him between seventy to ninety million pounds. I did say discard, disregarding him as being as uh, dis disregarding him as being as part of um, any swap deal. The ball, you know, um, you know, our move for him, you know, would be dependent on whether we could sell Popper um, or Romelu Lukaku. But yeah, Juventus are willing to offer. Paul Dybala in a swap deal for Lukaku. Dybala can play as a forward. I think that's where he primarily plays. But he can also actually you know, play him as an attacking uh, midfielder. And like I said, he's more or less the same age as Lukaku. Lukaku's a bit old than him. Obviously, you know, Lukaku's 26 and you know, Dybala's 25. But Dybala's... Look, I think he's better than Romelu Lukaku. Let's be honest. You know, he's, you know, he's uh, quick. You know, he's an agile player. He's Dybala. I think he's pretty uh, good um, in the air. Don't get me wrong. You know, I have got uh, concerns um, about him. But... Um, like I said, I think that would be a very beneficial uh, for Manchester United, but still, you know, could uh, make uh, the move uh, to Inter Milan. But Lukaku has been in the football club, you know, two years. Um, obviously, you know, he scored 42 goals in 96 games in all competitions. You know, he has still got three years left on his contract uh, with Manchester United. Um, he was exceptional um, in his first season was Lukaku, but, you know, didn't really replicate that um, in his second season. But you do know I've got so many concerns about him, you know. I'll credit Lukaku, you know, he's... Goals got his goal scoring pedigree is very good in the Premier League. You know he's a uh, well uh, Premier League uh, proven, and you know he has still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him um, as Ron Will Lukaku, but. Um like I said, I think you know Manchester United need to get rid of him, and I said we need to sell players because we sell Pogba and Lukaku. I think it'll help us with our transition, and it will help us with our rebuilding process. You know, looking at it, we could generate at least maybe 150 or 160 million pounds uh, for their, their departures. But I initially said, you know, based on the extortionate amounts we put on Pogba and Lukaku, this could be the stumbling block of both players. You know, making their you know proposed their moves away uh, from the football club. But now, reportedly, we've basically you know imposed a deadline on you know uh, Lukaku and all that, and we're giving him till Thursday, you know, to uh, engineer. Um, a move uh, to Manchester United and you know the, uh, a move away from Manchester United sorry and you know this is actually you no know, stemming uh, from uh, the current uh, Metro so um, like I said you know he, he could uh, be on his uh, way out of the club uh, sometime uh, this week but obviously you know he hasn't uh, travelled uh, to Norway um, you know uh, to, you know he hasn't travelled uh, to Norway so he wasn't part of the Norway squad uh, rather than uh, Lukaku but um, like I said there's been you know quite a few players uh, mentioned you know who could replace him um, the football club obviously you know Bal is one of them um, obviously you know there's been talks about Wizzim Ben Yedder a couple of weeks ago obviously now there's been recent reports coming out um, about uh, Moussa Dembele uh, from Lyon. You know, with Moussa Dembele, I think he's actually not an out-and-out -out number nine, so I think he would be a good replacement for Lukaku. Don't forget, you know, Moussa Dembele's got a hell of a lot of uh, years ahead of him. You know, he's only, what, uh, 23 uh, years of age. I think he's just turned 23 years, Moussa Dembele. Obviously, you know, last season he scored 20 goals in 46 games in all competitions for Lyon. You know, he's got four years left on his contract with Lyon, but last season was his debut season in France with Lyon. You know, Lyon did get him from Celtic last summer for around, was it, 19 or 20 million pounds. But before he was at Lyon, you know, he did have he did have a good spells at Celtic, and he also had a good spells uh, with Fulham because you know at Fulham, um, that's why I think um, he initially uh, began his uh, senior uh, career. But he's supposed to be a technically a very very good footballer. He's moved to Dembele, you know, he's a proven goal scorer, and that's you know that's the type of play you know Manchester United you know do uh, currently uh, need. You know, I've also identified you know Nicolas Pepe as a you know a potential replacement for Lukaku, but I'm very skeptical about Nicolas Pepe coming in because I think you know according to recent reports, you know he could be um, on his uh, way uh, to Arsenal. So there's been quite a few players mentioned you know who could. Plays Lukaku, you know, there was a lot of talks about, you know, Bamian, you know, going on uh, the other week. Um, but yeah, so it's confirmed that, you know, we've. Um you know, we've uh, set um, a transfer deadline. Um, you know, basically, um, on Romelu Lukaku, and you know, we're giving him till Thursday, of course, uh, to make um, his uh, current uh, decision. So I think he'll probably end up making the move to Inter Milan, or if he doesn't go to Inter Milan, obviously, you know, he'll end up uh, making uh, the move uh, to Juventus. But Man United have been in talks with Inter Milan. You know, we've also recently, you know, been in talks with Juventus over, you know, a potential swap deal, you know, involving Romelu Lukaku um, and Paulo uh, Dybala. But you know, Tottenham have obviously, you know, been in there for Dybala as well. You know, they're looking to uh, do uh, more of a transfer um, activity, and Tottenham would obviously orchestrate on. 
putting Dybala alongside Harry Kane man, in their um, attack of their line. So, yeah, that is uh, the latest uh, news um, on that. But, um, like I said, I think there's um, only now um, a week and a half, you know, remaining um, in this transfer window. So, you know, we have got to be uh, more competitive um, in this window. Uh, like, uh, literally, you know, reflecting back um, in March, um, Ole Gunnar, uh, at the end of March, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, preference, you know, what's actually, you know, to get our transfer business uh, completed uh, by the time uh, pre-season came. But, obviously, you know, that didn't uh, currently uh, materialise. Um, obviously, you know, if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer doesn't get all the players uh, that he wants in this window, you can basically say that the board have let him down. Uh, and you can basically, you know, say the board have let him down when they initially the board um, assured they would be back in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer this summer. But, um... I do believe, you know, we're definitely you know, going to do uh, more of a transfer activity, you know, without um, a shadow um, of a doubt. But, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, has given his analysis on this transfer when, uh, you know, he hasn't become infuriated throughout, you know, he basically said, you know, we need to be patient, you know, we've got uh, two uh, good players in. But obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, does want to build on, you know, Daniel James and Wam because he does believe Solskjaer, you know, we need uh, more than that because analysing our current squad at the moment, you know, it's not competitive enough. And even if we had now, uh, regards to our managers, but even if we, even if we had now, uh, a manager to the highest level or a manager with a fantastic pedigree, you know, they would still currently struggle uh, with this Manchester United uh, squad. But, you know, we get Bruno Fernandes in, you know, we get the likes of Harry Maguire in, you know, they'll, they'll, you know, them players, you know, them type of players, you know, will uh, dramatically um, improve us. But, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer the other week, you know, was speaking about our ambitions, you know, going on into this season. He believes we'll have a better season. He believes the club will be aiming for third up than fourth. I believe we'll qualify for the Champions League again next season because I think we'll have a better season this season than what we saw last season because last season was a huge dis disappointment, you know. We, we finished six. Obviously, you know, we failed uh, to qualify uh, for the Champions League. And like I initially said, you know, Champions League football is always very pivotal, you know, when you do want to attract, you know, players to the elite level. And it's also very imperative, you know, when you do want to convince your imperative uh, players um, and that uh, to stay um, at the football club. Um, so that, you know, was um, a huge, uh, huge uh, disappointment. We've actually, you know, failed to qualify for the Champions League uh, three times out of the six seasons, you know, since um, Alex Ferguson uh, retired. But I do believe we're going to have um, a better uh, season uh, this season uh, without um, a shadow um, of a doubt. Uh, but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you all know, you know, he wants to recommend a number of young players to come in that can grow, develop um, and emulate um, into superstars. But I do believe, you know, we are moving away from the policy of signing them well-established players. You know, quite a few people have actually indicated out, you know, we should be uh, sensible of our recruitment this summer. But like I said, you know, in the last couple of windows, you know, we our recruitment policy, you know, has been very, very poor. You know, we didn't get anyone in January. Um, obviously, you know, we didn't get um, our number one uh, targets uh, last summer. We didn't spend uh, much uh, last summer, to be quite honest. Yeah. Uh, but we have got a history of spending big. You know, we spent a lot of money over the years in the last five or six years. You know, since Alex Ferguson retired. You know, we've had different managers with different philosophies. You know, and we spent big on players in recent years. You know, a prime example, Pogba, eight to nine million. You know, Lukaku, seventy-five million pounds. Um, but I, I think Oligan Solskjaer did confirm anyway. You know, we're not intending on overspending um, on our uh, current uh, chance for targets but like I did say uh, still uh, lots of to address in the squad I do believe this season probably our expectations will be to finish in that top four I think that's what our you know at least will be uh, to finish in the top four obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has uh, got to um, exceed uh, these expectations I initially said that uh, our aspirations will be that will, will be that uh, top four um, in the next uh, couple of uh, seasons um, but I think this, this season we'll finish maybe fourth maybe third but I'm still sceptical about you know us uh, winning uh, the league because at the moment you know you can say City strides ahead of us Liverpool strides ahead of us even though actually, you know, Liverpool have had a really bad start uh, to pre-season, but they did have a good season last season. You know, Liverpool have invested well um, in the last uh, couple of uh, windows. I also believe, you know, Arsenal... Um are doing good business in this window now, even though they got a tight budget, was it? You know, they only got a tight budget. You know, they only got given around what forty or forty-five million pounds to spend. Um, I don't know the sign. Did they sign that William Saliba? If I'm right, I think they also did uh, get uh, someone else. Uh, they also closing in um, on the signing um, of Nicolas uh, Pepe. So you know, they are doing a uh, pretty uh, decent um, our Arsenal uh, so far in this uh, current uh, window. But they needed to because obviously, you know, Arsenal would only you know restricted to loan signings. Don't forget, you know, back in the January transfer window. And obviously, you know, there needs to be there's, there needs to be vast improvements um, in Arsenal squad you know just basically you know like my club Manchester United um, and all that and um but, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, um, you know, there's still uh, a week and a half, you know, to currently uh, go. So I am very convinced, you know, that we can maybe get two or maybe even three deals uh, complete, you know, by the time uh, this window, you know, does uh, currently uh, shut. But I do believe Ed Woodward um, did remain in the UK or has still remained um, in the UK, you know, to um, obviously, you know, oversee um, our transfer business because obviously, you know, he currently, you know, wants to uh, get uh, deals um, and that um, over the line. Um but um, yeah, so I did. I did initially believe that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's you know top priority you know was to recommend an experienced centre half in. Then he was then going to focus on you know bringing them um, a couple of uh, new um, additions um, in that midfield. But um, obviously now it looks like where like Bruno Fernandes is going to be our third signing this summer. 
But we'll give you the news now um, in regards uh, to Harry uh, Maguire. Now, as it has currently uh, confirmed uh, today, um, I think that Harry Maguire now anywhere um, is willing to uh, force uh, the move uh, to Manchester United. Um, it's confirmed uh, today anywhere that Harry Maguire um, has skipped Leicester training. Uh, so obviously, you know, this just indicates how, you know, that he's uh, forcing him to move away from Leicester. And of course, that Harry Maguire, you know, does uh, want to uh, make uh, the move uh, to Manchester United. Obviously, he's already informed Brendan Rodgers. He's also informed um, his Leicester teammates that he does want to leave Leicester Harry Maguire. You know, to obviously rejuvenate his career and take um, his football and her career at the uh, next uh, level and obviously he wants to come to Manchester United you know and obviously you know he does uh, want to uh, relish uh, this opportunity because he probably believes it's going to be beneficial for his career you know with him coming to Manchester United obviously he's coming to a much much bigger club um, obviously you know Leicester are not really a big club you know to be quite honest and obviously Harry Maguire you know he's not going to want to play for Leicester for years or he's not going to want to intend on spending the rest of his career with Leicester obviously you know he's currently you know, going to uh, want to uh, move on obviously you know Brendan Rodgers has basically said you know he'll you know will it told Harry Maguire, you know, he'll let, he'll let him leave Leicester as long as, you know, we're willing to pay uh, what Leicester are demanding. Obviously, you know, Leicester have said, you know, they want in the excess of £80 million, pounds, so they do uh, want um, real their record uh, fee. But, um, I think it didn't, as you say, like he updated you today and he updated you yesterday. Uh, I, say, I think it says, you know, we're ready to sign Harry Maguire and we are ready to pay what Leicester are demanding uh, once we can uh, sell uh, Ron uh, Lukaku. So I think we're all concentrating on selling Lukaku first, generating the funds from his departure, then putting them funds, um, of course, um, on um, Harry uh, Maguire. But I do believe anywhere now, like I said earlier on, that Lukaku um, is going to be uh, leaving uh, the football club. But, um, yeah, so Harry Maguire, you know, does come here, wants to uh, leave uh, Leicester. But we do know it has been Manchester United and, you know, Manchester City uh, that have been uh, battling out for his Services. Obviously, you know, reflecting back a couple of weeks ago, you know, it was looking like, you know, Manchester City were going to get him. You know, City orchestrated on paying him around 280 grand a week. You know, City were going to get him for the world record fee of 80 million and that. Uh, £280,000, sorry. Sorry, 80 million, I mean, sorry. And um, obviously, you know, City were seeing him um, as a replacement uh, for Vincent uh, Company. So actually, his first choice preference was actually Manchester City's, uh, Manchester City's um, Harry uh, Maguire, you know, um, a couple of uh, weeks ago. But initially, City had withdrawn their interest because obviously, Man City um, are not willing to pay what Leicester are demanding. You know, City obviously, you know, are only willing to pay around, what, £65 million pounds, uh, for um, his services. But we've been in poor position to sign Harry Maguire, you know, uh, for quite uh, some time now. But he does, uh, of course, uh, want to uh, leave uh, Leicester. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, obviously, you know, has instructed Ed Woodward, you know, anyway, you know, to currently uh, get uh, the deal um, over the line. Uh, so, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, wants to get this deal over the line as soon as possible. Um, obviously, uh, I think he's actually, you know, following a serious knee injury uh, that Eric Bay um, had, had sustained because, obviously, you know, Eric Bay um, sustained a serious uh, knee injury. Obviously, you know, he came, he limped off um, against, in our, well, he limped off um, in our 2-1 uh, win um, against Tottenham. With Eric Bay, we do know how much of an imperative player he is. Um, you know, he's got great potential, that is Eric Bay, but like I do keep saying, I think Eric Bay's Manchester United career has been badly affected, you know, the matter of injuries he's sustained um, obviously not only that you know of his uh, fallout um, under managers and Eric Bay he's been at the club over three years now you know we paid around £30 million pounds in, uh, from Villarreal um but yeah, it's a, and obviously Eric Bay is a big doubter for this season, so this is why Olegan Solskjaer you know, wants to get the deal over the line for Harry Maguire um, as soon um, as possible. Uh, but Olegan Solskjaer has identified him as his uh, number one uh, defensive uh, target um, anywhere because obviously that central defensive area is one of the pivotal areas where we've got to strengthen up because I think we've had issues defensively for quite some time now. We've had issues defensively and that got proven last season because we conceded 54 goals in 38 Premier League games. And I don't think we've had a good defence to rebuild on you know, since we had the likes of Vidic, Ferdinand, you know, Gary Neville, Patrice Evra, you know, because they were good defenders uh, back in the day um, under uh, Alex Ferguson. But um, like I said, we've got to get um, a world-class central defender in. Um, obviously, some reports saying that Leicester value Harry Maguire at £90 million, pounds, but I don't think we'll be willing to pay £90 million because that's way too extortionate. He's not even worth £90 million pounds anyway, Harry Maguire, and probably for that figure, maybe just a bit more, you'd be able to obviously, you know, maybe uh, get a cooler barley um, and that um, on the board and... Um, but, um, yeah, and I think, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, wants to partner uh, Harry Maguire up alongside uh, Victor Lindelof um, in our uh, back line. And I, I think, you know, they complement each other, you know, really, really well. And I do believe Victor Lindelof um, himself, um, would, he's excited about the prospects, you know, of Harry Maguire, you know, linking up with him um, in our uh, current uh, back line. And, you know, but I think he's going to, I think we'll get the deal over the line uh, for uh, Harry uh, Maguire. Even though recent reports did say, you know, Leicester are demanding a higher transfer fee um, up front because, you know, they're very sceptical that Manchester United, you know, will qualify uh, for the Champions League uh, next season. 
It reportedly said, you know, uh, they want a higher transfer fee up front. We reportedly so far have offered around £72 million pounds with additional bonus payment, uh, with additional bonus payments, uh, that, which obviously, you know, will be paid, uh, which uh, which obviously, you know, will be uh, paid, you know, if we secure Champions League qualification and that uh, for their next season. But Leicester have confirmed, you know, they want um, a higher uh, transfer fee um, up front. But I think he'll dramatically improve us um, in our back line with Aaron McGuire. You know, he's well Premier League proven, so that's very beneficial for Manchester United. You know, his stability is good. You know, he shows that ability here to fly out uh, from the back. He's also very good in the air. I think his work ethic is really, really good. Plus, um, he's British as well, don't forget. And obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to recruit British, you know, talents to Manchester United this summer because there's been quite a lot of British players on our agenda. Obviously, so far this summer, we've got two British uh, players um, on the board. Um, but Harry Maguire is still 26, so basically he's still in his prime and, you know, still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years ahead of him. But I do believe he'd have all the attributes to succeed um, at Manchester United. Um, obviously, you know, he's, he's been at Leicester two years as Harry Maguire. Um, he's been at Leicester uh, two years. Um, He's made 76 appearances um, in all competitions. You know, 69 of those appearances have come um, in the Premier League. You know, he signed a new long-term contract with Leicester last summer, so he is in the contract with them um, until 2023. And Leicester, you know, if they get £80 million to him, you know, they'll make a huge they'll make a huge profit on the player anywhere because you know Leicester only paid around £17 million to his service uh, from Hull City back in you know um, 2017. But you know, we've been relentlessly into him, and you know, obviously reflected that last summer. Um, obviously, you know, it was our priority, you know, to recommend them um, a central defender, you know, to come in. Um, um, obviously, but reflecting back last summer, the board weren't backing the signings that Jose Mourinho wanted to uh, recommend in uh, to the football club. But one of the players Mourinho wanted last summer, of course, uh, was uh, Harry uh, Maguire. But you know, Leicester have confirmed that the run, the run that that they aren't. They're not under uh, any uh, financial pressure, you know, to sell Harry Maguire because obviously Leicester do know how much of an imperative uh, player um, he is. But we've been tracking him for ages. I think we was also tracking him when he was a youngster at Sheffield United because he initially uh, began his uh, career uh, with Sheffield United. Uh, did Harry uh, Maguire? Um, this that, that's why he began his uh, current uh, career. So I do believe we was tracking him uh, then. Um, and I do believe Harry Maguire um, has demanded that he does want to become the captain um, of Manchester United. Um, of course, if, he move, if he's moved to Manchester United, it uh, does uh, materialise. But don't forget, you know, we've already had a £78 million bid turned down for Harry Maguire. But I still believe we are in talks with Leicester now over coming to um, an agreement um, on a fee. But as it has confirmed, Harry Maguire um, has skipped uh, Leicester uh, training uh, today. So obviously that's going to fuel more speculation. And I do believe, you know, Harry Maguire is basically, you know, forcing his way out of Leicester. And obviously, you know, he does want to come to Manchester United. This is probably the reason why he has skipped training today according to what the media said he, he, he skipped training because it was something to do because uh, it, it was uh, due to her illness or something um, like that but um, yeah it's confirmed um, he has uh, skipped her training there today but anyway Ed Woodward uh, wants to uh, get the deal uh, you know fully uh, completed uh, for uh, Harry uh, Maguire because we are all aware and the majority of Manchester United fans do know how much um, of a good sign um, he will be um, obviously we can't we, he's, he's nowhere near as good as Virgil van Dijk so you can't put him in Virgil van Dijk's calibre um, or level but uh, and because Virgil van Dijk let's be honest I'm going to be honest here you know he's the best uh, centre half um, in the world, but you know, for me, I still think Harry Maguire, you know, would be a uh, good enough uh, for uh, Manchester United. So, like I said, hopefully, we know we can uh, get this uh, deal um, over the line. Um, but like I said, you know, there's been a lot of central defenders on our agenda. Like I said, there was, you know, we've been long admirers of Koulibaly, but Koulibaly is obviously you know, now not going to happen. Well, I don't think it's going to happen anywhere, you know, because obviously I think the only way we'd get Koulibaly, you know, is if we were willing to pay silly amounts of money for him. Um, obviously, you know, Napoli have looked in there to offload him um, anyway. And I do believe there's a lot of contradictions about the stories about Koulibaly, to be quite honest with you anyway. So Koulibaly is out of the equation. He, 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 him to Manchester United isn't going to happen. He probably will cost a bit more than Harry Maguire. Um, but I just don't think, you know, Manchester United, you know, would be willing to pay it because they demand demanding an extortion amount anywhere in Napoli, you know, because obviously, you know, they don't want to um, offload uh, the player. You know, there's people talking about Toby Alderweireld still. I think, I, well, I read up about him recently, but when I read up last week about it, he said actually, you know, he could now be expected to stay um, at Tottenham, even though he did initially refuse her to sign him um, a new contract. Um, obviously, his initial release causes around, what, you know, £25 um, million. Uh, pounds. And we do know from a financial point of view, you know, Toby Alderweireld is a much cheaper solution than the likes of the Harry Maguire's and, you know, the Killer Barley's. And, you know, he's well Premier League proven he's Toby Alderweireld because obviously, He's been at Tottenham over uh, four years now, but like I said, he, I don't think it was in, it was in our plans. You know, he, I don't think it was ever in Oligan Solskjaer's plans. You know, to recommend him in. Obviously, you know, he was in for um, Ardwear uh, last summer. Um, but yeah, for me, I think Harry Maguire, you know, would be uh, the right uh, defender. So um, yeah, so if he comes in, you know, he will dramatically improve his uh, defensively. I think if he comes in as well, you know, we'll orchestrate on selling one central defender because you know, analysing, you know, we've got a lot of central defenders. You know, we've got Lindelof. You know, we've got Bay. You know, we've got Rojo. We've got Smalling. You know, we've got Jones. And I think Smalling and Jones um, are very inconsistent now for Manchester United. You know, we have seen glimpses of their best forms um, over the years that like they have been here, but they're, they're aging up now. You know, they're too inconsistent. Um, and I think it was bad business for Manchester United. You know, given them to uh, new long-term uh, contracts and uh, 
But yeah, I think we're going to um, offload uh, one uh, central defender. Obviously, there was a lot of parts going out the other week, you know, saying that allegedly, you know, Victor Lindelof had been linked to a move to Barcelona. But, you know, we dismissed, I think him himself, sorry, you know, he dismissed speculations of linking with a move to Barcelona because, you know, Harry Maguire is a best best option, you know, of what we've currently got in the moment in our central defensive area. But with Victor Lindelof, I think, you know, he's flourishing at Manchester United. You know, he's been at the club two years, obviously over two years now. Um, but he's complete. he's had two full seasons with Manchester United as Victor Lindelof. Um, I thought in his first season, you know, he was uh, very inconsistent, you know, didn't really settle in. But I thought Victor Lindelof in his second season, you know, he was absolutely uh, fantastic. And I thought there was vast improvements um, in his game. And I do believe he's going to do well, you know, going on um, into this season um, as uh, Victor uh, Lindelof. So basically, you know, Harry Maguire alongside him, you know, would be um, absolutely uh, fantastic um, indeed. So that is uh, the latest uh, news um, by Harry uh, Maguire. Um, obviously, as I've been giving, keeping you up to date, um, obviously, you know, with uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes, um, obviously, you know, like I said earlier on the video, it's looking very imminent, you know, he's going to be um, our third signing this summer now, is Bruno Fernandes. Obviously, as reports um, emerged out um, of the media uh, yesterday, um, obviously, you know, during uh, Sporting uh, Lisbon's 2-1 uh, uh, defeat uh, to Valencia um, in uh, Sporting Lisbon's pre-season game, obviously, you know, Bruno Fernandes um, came off uh, crying um, in that game. So that just that's, that's uh, given us an indication Indication that you know he's probably you know going to be leaving Sport in Lisbon, and obviously you know Bruno Fernandes um, is on his way to Manchester United. So basically, Bruno Fernandes um, emo uh, Bruno Fernandes um, emotional reaction has obviously you know put um, our fans um, into a meltdown. But Sport in Lisbon did lose uh, by two goals uh, to one um, against uh, Valencia. But you know with him coming off the pitch crying, you know that that just gives an indication that obviously that's obviously looking likely that's going to be his farewell um, appearance uh, for Sport in Lisbon. So that game yesterday is probably his last game um, in his uh, Sporting uh, Lisbon uh, shirt. But it's looking like now Bruno Fernandes is coming in anyway according to a lot of uh, media um, outlets obviously it's been coming out at least um, last uh, couple of uh, days saying you know Manchester United you know have reached um, a transfer agreement with Sporting has been for Bruno Fernandes it also mentions that around the 62 or 63 million pound fee um, has been agreed uh, between Man United um, and Sporting Lisbon and reports were indicating out of the weekend saying that Bruno Fernandes was set to fly uh, you know to uh, England you know to um, have his uh, Manchester United medical ahead of his uh, proposed uh, move um, and that uh, to Old Trafford so it's looking like he's going to be coming in and obviously if we're getting 62 or 63 3 million. Obviously, that's going to take our spending um, up to around £130 uh, million pounds, uh, this summer. But yeah, Bruno Fernandes will, will be fantastic for Manchester United. Like I said, you know, we've been in for him uh, for the entire term of the summer. You know, I thought by now, I thought you know, we would have got uh, the deal um, over the line for Bruno Fernandes. But obviously, for the majority of the summer, it has seemed to be Sporting Lisbon's valuation. You know, that's, you know, seen to be uh, the current uh, stumbling block. Because initially, you know, Sporting Lisbon, you know, valued him at around, what, £70 million. Obviously, we blatantly made it clear, you know, we was not willing to spend £70 million on Bruno Fernandes. At one point, you know, we was only willing to spend around uh, £50 million on uh, Bruno Fernandes. But, you know, I think, you know, we believed, uh, I, I reading reports last week, it was stemming from Sky Sports. It was saying that Bruno Fernandes to Manchester United, uh, was very unlikely because potentially, you know, it said we believe that, you know, the majority of the speculation about Bruno Fernandes, you know, was actually you not know, stemming from Portugal, his homeland, uh, rather than Manchester. And, you know, quite recently, you know, the Sporting Lisbon boss, you know, he's given his over overarching view um, on the speculation about uh, Bruno Fernandes. And, you know, he's... Um, and, you know, he's basically uh, said that, you know, Sport, he could, uh, he said that uh, Bruno Fernandes could leave. You know, he said he, he, doesn't, he doesn't know where he will be playing um, his trade uh, this season. But he did actually say that his uh, future um, is up in the air. But he's aware of the speculation and he knows that clubs have been keen anywhere um, on uh, signing uh, Bruno Fernandes. So the Sport and Lisbon boss have, you know, he's said uh, quite um, a few things. Obviously, you know, the president of Sport and Lisbon, Federico Fernandes, he came out last week and obviously notified us, you know, what type of fee, you know, we'd have to pay to convince Sport and Lisbon to offload him. And obviously, he did say we'd have to spend um, upwards of 56 million because even he said last week the boss of uh, the president of Sporting Lisbon sorry you know he said uh, maybe if it even 56 million pounds wouldn't be enough you know to convince uh, Sporting uh, Lisbon uh, to offload him but anyway um, he's set to um, undergo his medical with Manchester United report said at the weekend he was set to uh, fly out uh, to England so you know it should be uh, confirmed Definitely should be a confirmed uh, sometime uh, this week. You know, he should be officially a Manchester United player. You know, I was reading the Express yesterday and they initially said um, he was hours away from being um, uh, from officially you know, becoming um, a Manchester United player. I was reading the Daily Mirror quite recently and they said um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, has revealed that he wants to play Bruno Fernandes um, as a number 10 because maybe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer believes that, you know, um, you know well, that's where Bruno Fernandes, you know, won't be um, more effective because I do believe actually, you know, Bruno Fernandes um, is primarily you know, an attacking uh, midfielder. But I do believe Manchester United have 
are the only team in the running for him now anywhere, even though at one point Tottenham are in for him, obviously you know, Liverpool and that, that went in for him. Bruno Fernandes' um, agent, I do believe, um, has been to the UK quite a few times. Obviously, you know, he's held talks with Man United, he's held talks with Tottenham, he's also held talks with Liverpool. Obviously, he's looking for the best possible deal for his client. I think his agent is in the UK now, or he has recently you know, been to the uh, UK, and I think allegedly he said he was set to stay in the UK till uh, Bruno Fernandes, uh, till the deal um, is basically you not know, done. Um, I think if he comes to Manchester United, the reporter said, I think of the other week that you know he's going to get. We're going to give him around a hundred thousand pounds a week. Um, obviously that equates to around uh, five point uh, five uh, million um, a year. But he will dramatically um, improve his in that midfield. Um, I'd be, I'd be just skeptical of Bruno Fernandes coming in. Um, you know, of him coming in. But if you know if Milinkovic Savage, you know, was to follow up with Bruno Fernandes, then I would be more confident. And I think you know there would there would be a fantastic base um, in our uh, midfield. Oh yes, um, without um, a shadow um, of a doubt. Um, Because I'd, I'd be sceptical with us bidding one midfielder in because I believe we need two, two new midfielders. And initially, it was actually in our plans, you know, our initial plans was to actually, you know, keep Paul Bobber and bring two new additions in that midfield, you know, that can actually replace Ander Herrera and Mario Fellaini because obviously we do know that they're, they're both, you know, currently left uh, the football club. But I do believe, you know, regardless of what happens with Paul Pop, we still want to bring two new additions in that midfield. Maybe Malinkfi Savage's move to Manchester United is depending on what happens with Paul Pop. But, but the situation with Paul Pop, you know, is not having any effect on Bruno Fernandes coming to Manchester United. He's never had any effect on Bruno Fernandes coming to Manchester United as far as I currently uh, know. Um so Bruno Fernandes' Manchester, Bruno Fernandes's, uh, move to Manchester United, of course, is definitely you know, not dependent on you know what happens there uh, with Paul Pogba. But Bruno Fernandes, you know, will dramatically improve his um, in that midfield um, because obviously in his two years of sport and he's been you know he's done really really well. He's exceeded expectations. He said the other week you know Solskjaer wasn't going to get back to you know for this uh, for the for this particular signing. Um, obviously, because it said you know Ed Woodward had said no to Bruno Fernandes. It said you know we had we had concerns about bringing him to the football club and paying quite a bit of money for him because obviously you know he's got little experience of playing to the highest level. No a little about Champions League football. Has played in the Champions League, Bruno Fernandes, but he hasn't really got a lot of experience ever playing him in the Champions League. But like I said, I think he'll succeed at Manchester United. And you know, I think he'll deliver the same element of the form, uh, the performances that he has done in his two seasons with Sporting Lisbon. You know, when he does uh, come to uh, Manchester United um, and all that. So I do believe there's a lot of credibility in now in Bruno Fernandes. You know, currently uh, coming uh, in. You know, sometimes you know deals can collapse uh, right uh, at the final hurdle. But I think Sporting Lisbon have basically you know come to accept the fact that you know Bruno Fernandes wants to leave Sporting Lisbon. You know, he wants to uh, rejuvenate. Um, his career. I think last season, I think he scored around 31 goals, so that's also you know very, very impressive. His initial release cost is £88 million, pounds, don't forget, in his contract with Sporting Lisbon. Um, he only signed this five-year deal, was it, last summer, so he's in the contract with Sporting Lisbon until 2023. You know, he spent the majority of his career in Italy, you know, when he was uh, younger, but um, I think Bruno Fernandes, you know, hasn't he got, has, has had quite a few discussions with his representative, you know, um, over the potential uh, move uh, to Manchester United, so I do believe uh, that's his actual uh, first choice uh, preference, um, but Sporting Lisbon and I've been playing hardball for the majority of the summer, you know, obviously. And obviously, you know, they, they haven't been reliable because obviously a couple of months ago, it was looking very la imminent, should I say. He was going to be uh, going uh, to Manchester City. But obviously, he's transferred to Manchester City and never materialised because initially uh, Manchester City had withdrawn uh, their interest. So hopefully, you know, Bruno Fernandes, you know, does come in and hopefully, you know, it is announced uh, sometime uh, this week because this is now a big this is a big week now for Manchester United because there's only a week and a half left um, in the chance window. So we do want to get at least two deals um, over the line uh, this week. Um, and all that, so I think we need to get another two or three more players in. Um, I'm skeptical about Manchester United winning a right win, a right winning win. I don't think we're going to bring a right winning win, ring, a, win, a right winning win uh, this summer. Maybe we'll look to probably you know get a right winner um, in the January transfer window, but I don't think it's going to happen um, in this transfer window. Um, but um, I think we'll get you know the midfielders we want. We'll probably you know get the central defender we want, which is good. Um, but um, yeah, so um, give you the news now um, about um, Malinkovic uh, Savage uh, from Lazio uh, now. Um, I've been reading uh, recent reports um, about uh, Malinkovic uh, Savage and now reportedly it reportedly says uh, McCauley to the Sun you know the Sun isn't uh, always uh, reliable um, obviously you know they basically said you know Manchester United um, have agreed uh, the personal terms with Malinkovic Savage it also says you know we are orchestrating on you know paying him around 5.5 million um, a year but it does still mention that no fee um, is yet you know being agreed you know between Manchester United um, and Lazio I do believe reports said you know Lazio want around uh, 90 million pounds uh, Man United are only willing to pay him around 
around uh, 72 million pounds uh, for him. So it's actually the sunset now. It's 81 million pounds uh, that Lazio now do currently uh, one. But it says we're probably now Manchester United are uh, closing um, on the signing um, of Linkford uh, Savage. Like I did say, he's moved to, he's moved to Manchester United. He's you know you know depending on you know what happens uh, with Paul Pogba, as you know recent reports uh, do uh, suggest out. Uh, but I think Linkford Savage you know would be the right uh, solution uh, for Manchester United. You know he's 24 years of age, so he's actually the same age as Bruno Fernandes because you know Bruno Fernandes um, is uh, 24 uh, years of age. But you know Bruno, Linkford Savage and Bruno Fernandes you know will complement each other um, in our uh, midfield uh, fantastically uh, well. Uh, but actually you know last week. You know, last week, I know the media got it wrong, but, you know, they said last week that the media, and it was actually, you know, from an Italian outlet called La Republica, and they said last week that, you know, Manchester United had agreed a fee with Lazio from Linkford Savage. It also said a contract and that had been agreed, and it was said that he was going to be signing a five-year deal with Manchester United, which would take him under contract with the club until 2024. This is what it uh, basically uh, said. This was coming from that um, Italian um, outlet, and it said a fee, and that, um, you know, couldn't have been um, agreed, but it turns out, you know, no fee has yet, you know, obviously, you know, uh, come to um, an agreement. But I think, you know, we're willing to um, offer him um, a five-year a deal um, anywhere but it did recent reports have said you know Lazio want 90 million pounds so you know we're around 18 million short um, of their uh, valuation but um, I do believe that Linkford Savage ag agent anywhere uh, arrived in the UK um, last week and I think you know he's set to hold uh, further up more uh, talks uh, with Manchester United because allegedly um, you know Linkford Savage uh, told um, his Lazio teammates that he's going to be uh, leaving uh, Lazio uh, this summer to obviously probably you know rejuvenate his career and uh, take um, his uh, football in uh, career uh, to the next level um, obviously we do know he's uh, the Lazio boss um, has come out and obviously you know he's had his overarching view on it and you know he's aware of the speculation about Malinkvich Savage you know he basically knows how much an imperative uh, player uh, that Malinkvich Savage is uh, to Lazio and he obviously you know wants him to remain um, in Italy you know does uh, the Lazio uh, boss um, but um, I think he's confirmed that you know if um, you know, Lazio, you know, may be forced uh, to sell, you know, if a suitable um, offer, you know, company uh, comes in for him. But reportedly now, we've reached an agreement with Lazio. We've also reached an agreement with, agreement with Linkfield Savage's um, agent. But the fee seems to be the stumbling block at this present time because, you know, no fee has yet come to an agreement between Manchester United um, and Lazio. But Linkfield Savage, like I said, 24 years of age, he's Serbian. Um, I think he's primarily central midfielder, so mainly box to box. Uh, can also uh, play him as an attacking uh, midfielder. Um, but yeah, in Manchester United have been relentless since when Milinkovic Savage, you know, don't forget, you know, was in for him uh, last summer. I do believe Lazio were demanding an extortion amount last summer. I do believe they wanted in region of around £108 million, pounds, um, if I'm right. And I think we also scouted uh, the player uh, last summer. But uh, in, the, in the majority of his four years with Lazio, you know, he's been quite um, impressive as uh, Milinkovic uh, Savage. Um, I think he's been inconsistent in the last, what, uh, five um, or six months. But in his four years with Lazio, you know, he scored 22 goals in 125 games. That's just in this area here. Yeah. And in all competitions, he's scored uh, 31 goals. Um, in 138 games as uh, Malinkvich uh, Savage so I probably do believe you know he would uh, succeed um, in that, um, at Manchester United um, but he's got he's still under contract with Lazio you know um, until uh, 2023 but Sky in Italy you know, reported this um, the other week saying that you know we was in for him um, obviously it was coming out from the Italian sources and you know they said Man United was planning to submit around a £72 million pound bid but it said you know Lazio president confirmed that Lazio are demanding that they want um, around £90 million pounds. so reportedly you know Lazio um, have agreed uh, to currently uh, sell uh, the player but his work ethic is good. He's technically a very, very good footballer. I think he's energetic as well. But him and Bruno Fernandes, you know, would be fantastic um, in our uh, midfield. So if we can bring them to win, you know, you know, I wouldn't be really bothered if Paul probably does leave. It'd be even more beneficial if we could bring them to win and you know keep uh, Paul Pogba um, at the football club. You know, our midfield would be absolutely fantastic then because you know you can't put Bruno Fernandes or you know Linkfield Savage in Paul Pogba's calibre um, or level, can you? Uh, because obviously, you know, when Paul Pogba is at his best form, you know, he's arguably one of the best midfielders um, in world football. You know, let's be honest in in a large portion as large portion um, large portions of Paul Pobbage you know uh, three, uh, three years at Manchester United you know since he rejoined the club back in uh, 2016 you know Paul Pobbage has been very very um, inconsistent you know he has started pre-season well you know credit him for that and you know he, you know we have seen glimpses of his best form at Manchester United but you know he hasn't really you know really uh, lived up to expectation levels as well I thought he would have done but you know Paul Pobbage when he's at his best you know he's definitely you know one of the best uh, midfielders um, in the world and obviously you know, I'd say in this market this day and age he's worth 150 or 160 million pounds you know recent reports have actually said now we want 180 million pounds for Paul Pobbe so we're demanding more than double than what we paid for him from Juventus back in 2016 you know because obviously you now we paid him around uh, 89 million pounds his services obviously he is um, our most expensive signing I'm obviously keep, keeping up to date what's going on with Pobbe obviously you know Real Madrid is still in there for him obviously at one point you know Juventus are in there for him but if Paul Pobbe does leave the football club I think he will uh, go uh, to uh, Real Madrid but it still remains uncertain you know what's happening there with Paul Pobbe you know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer knows how much of an imperative player he is you know, he wants to try and convince him to remain um, at the football club. Um, 
But like I said, if Bruno Fernandes and Milinkovic Savage coming in our midfield, you know, we'll be uh, really, really happy. You know, we've got other midfielders there. You know, you've got, you know, Matic. He's too inconsistent, is the man you I've got strong concerns about him. You know, he started pre season really, really poor. And every time he's in our midfield, you know, he's, 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 he's so even effective. You know, our midfield looks totally imbalanced when he's playing in it because Matic is so slow. And, you know, I know he's highly experienced in the Premier League. You know, we paid £40 million pounds from a couple of years ago, was it, from Chelsea? And, you know, we have seen glimpses of his best form. You know, we saw he did put some good performances out towards the back end of last season, but I just think he's too slow. And obviously, you know, Matic isn't uh, getting there uh, many younger. Um, but um, yeah, you know, we get Bruno Fernandes and Link for Savage, you know, I will be uh, really, really happy. But I think we've had a great, fantastic start to pre-season. We've had a great, great start uh, to pre-season. You know, four wins out of four, you know, nine goals scored. Um, only a one goal conceded. You know, we're beating Perth Glory 2-0. We're beating Leeds 4-0. We're beating Interland 1-0. And we're beating uh, Tottenham 2-1. Uh, um, but we've had a great start. You know, there's only two games now remaining of pre-season anyway. You know, Christian Sun tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock. I've already given my preview. And then obviously our last pre-season game is AC Milan on the 3rd of August, I think it is. And that's in uh, Cardiff. And uh, then obviously, you know, it's uh, the new uh, Premier League uh, season. But like I said, I know pre-season is meaningless in a way, you know, it's obviously just warm-ups for the new season, but you know, I think it's very beneficial, you know, for them upcoming players, you know, because it gives them a bit more of experience them under their belt. But I've been very, very impressed with the young players so far in pre-season. For us, you know, Mason Greenwood's been fantastic. He's scored two goals so far in pre-season. You know, Rashford's been fantastic. You know, he's scored two goals so far in pre-season. You've got Martial. He's been fantastic at Martial. He's also scored two goals um, in pre-season. You know, with Anthony Martial, I think, you know, we the club will actually, you know, or, or Orchestrate on you know playing Marshall in more of a central position uh, in the Premier League uh, this season because you know that, that that's where he seems to be more effective. Well, what we've seen of him pre-season when he's been playing centrally, you know, he seems to be uh, more um, effective um, in that position. Even though Marshall primarily plays him um, out wide, um, but he's like Rashford, isn't he? You know, Rashford can play centrally, also Rashford can play out wide. Rashford also, you know, seems to be uh, more um, effective uh, centrally. So don't get me wrong, Solskjaer will give everybody the chance, and he's give more or less everybody the chance um, in pre-season so far. You know, the young players, the fringe players, you know, the experienced means players um but initially he did that last season, you know, when he first came in, um, you know, when he was caretaker manager, you know, when he first got appointed in on the 19th of December last year, you know, following the, the dismissal of Jose Mino, he did say he was going to give everybody the chance, you know, which he uh, currently uh, did to be fair to him. And he'll do the same um, in the Premier League uh, this season, like he's doing now in pre-season, you know, he's uh, giving um, everybody uh, the opportunity. Like I said, the only players that haven't played on pre-season is Lukaku, Damian and Sanchez, uh, I think because Sanchez um, has been injured um, or something um, like that. Um, I do believe Demetri Mitchell's been injured, uh, also. So, you know, Fossil Mental and that's uh, being injured. Uh, Lee Grant's obviously not yet played because obviously, you know, he's been um, injured. Um but yeah, I'm all, yeah, he's giving um, everybody uh, the current uh, chance. But um, we've had a fantastic uh, start uh, to uh, pre-season, you know, which is uh, very, very um, good news. But yeah, like I said, Greenwood's done well. Uh, Chong's done really, really well, but he's still inexperienced. You know, Chong didn't play him um, against Tottenham because I think he came off actually. You no, know, I don't think he played against Tottenham. Chong didn't he come off uh, with a, uh, some kind of knock um, against the uh, Inter Milan? Um, I think Jimmy Garner's done quite well. You know, Angel Gomez has done really, really well. You know, I think Alex Tuanzebe you know, has done quite well. You know, but Tom and Ware's done well. Um, obviously. You know, Andres Pereira's done quite well. So I think the majority of the young players have stepped up. And, you know, Daniel James and Dan Wan you know, they've both been um, absolutely uh, fantastic. Um, but like I gave him my preview early on for the Manchester United Christian Sun game, um, Obviously, um, like I said, you know, I'll give you a bit of news uh, who Christian Sund are and all that. Obviously, you know, they are the Norwegian uh, football club and all that. Um, obviously, you know, this game uh, tomorrow evening is obviously, you know, in Oslo, in Oslo which is obviously, you know, the capital um, of Norway. I think the last time we played a Norwegian uh, side was obviously, you know, back in 2017, so a couple of years ago now. And I think it was against Falarenga and we did beat them uh, by uh, three goals uh, to nil. You know, like I said, Christian Sund, uh, BK, you know, they were only founded back in 2003, uh, which is obviously, you know, around uh, 15 uh, years ago. And obviously, you know, uh, with the two rival clubs, uh, Christian Sun BK um, and Klaus and Engen, uh, uh, no, Christian Sun uh, FK, sorry, and uh, Klaus and Engen um, FK, you know, they uh, came uh, together, you know, to um, establish um, a new team. But they only got founded um, 15 years ago, uh, did uh, Christian uh, Sun. I do believe Christian Sun BK uh, got promoted uh, to the top level of Norwegian football um, in 2016. Uh, they got promoted uh, to the top level um, of Norwegian uh, football. And uh, I think they finished seventh and fifth um, in, their, uh, two cam in their two campaigns um, in, you know, in uh, the top flight. I do believe they are way through their season um, at the moment. Um, obviously, 
I think the last game, they haven't played uh, since uh, the 5th of July, you know, when actually, you know, Christian Sun, you know, beat, um, you know, was it a uh, little strong uh, by uh, five goals uh, to two. Uh, but yeah, I think it'll be an easy uh, Manchester United uh, win. But Norway is where originally not um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, is from. I think it's a stadium called Ulevil Stadium or something like that. You know, I apologise um, if I've, you know, currently uh, pronounced uh, that wrong. But yeah, it's like it's confirmed, you know, Sanchez hasn't come. Uh, he's not part of the Norway squad. Lukaku is not part of the Norway squad. Damien, of course, um, he's not a uh, part of the Norway squad. Uh, Lee Grant's travelled over because obviously, you know, we've named them 26 uh, man uh, squad. Um, uh, it is a 26 uh, man uh, squad uh, for uh, the trip. Uh, but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, will probably do, you know, what he has been doing for the majority so uh, for the majority of the games so far in pre-season. You know, he'll probably put an 11 out in the first half and, you know, he'll probably put an, uh, a different 11 out um, in the second half. So he will uh, rotate. Or maybe, you know, he, well, he hasn't done it in all his games because against Inter Milan, you know, he didn't swap all the 11 players at half time. You know, he gives some players, you know, uh, 50, 60 minutes you know some of them 17 or like he did say he was gonna like you know yeah currently yeah, dead um but yeah, it's uh, six o'clock uh, t uh, tomorrow, um, as you well know. Obviously, Eric Bay won't be featuring because obviously not Eric Bay's uh, got um, a series uh, knee injury. Um, Eric Bay, um, of course, has currently uh, got um, a series uh, knee injury. Um, but um, yeah, and that's certainly um, everything's up there. But I do believe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, can get you know Manchester United uh, back to a success. You know, I do believe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is following um, Alex Ferguson's uh, philosophy and all that. Definitely following Alex Ferguson's philosophy. But like I said, you know, we're never going to be the team of what we was under Alex Ferguson. You know, no one's going to ever follow Alex Ferguson's legacy. You know, no one, you know, no one. We're, ne we're never going to achieve what we achieved under Alex Ferguson. You know, for uh, 20 odd uh, years. But you know, I still believe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, can get us back, you know, to being um, a competitive elite uh, level of football club. And even though we've been a toxic club for the last five or six years you know we are still one of the biggest clubs um, in the world you know we are the most successful team in England you know historically uh, you know and we are one of the biggest clubs in the world because look at what we've won we've won 13 Premier League titles you know 20 um, all um, in all you know won three European Cups you know won the League Cup uh, quite um, a few times and you know we've even we even played on world stages and that um, under the Alex Ferguson area so you know I do I think you know our team in you know the generation um, under Alex Ferguson you know was probably one of the best teams you know you'd have ever Currently, uh, seen, but analyze it now. You know we've got a uh, pretty uh, decent uh, team, but you know we've been inconsistent the last five six years. Uh, even though we have spent a lot of money, because it just hasn't worked out. You know we hasn't we haven't been playing as a team. You know the team haven't been gelling. Uh, but I do believe now of what I've and uh, uh, me analyzing what I've seen in pre-season so far, I can already see the vast um, improvements um, in the squad. You know which is uh, very very good. So we get Bruno Fernandez, we get um, Linky Savage, we get Harry Maguire in. I think you know we'll look a um, much much uh, better uh, team and all that. So we will currently uh, see uh, what happens. So the main part of this video was to give you the news about Lukaku anywhere. I was reading the Metro today. They basically said, you know, we have set um, Romelu Lukaku um, a transfer deadline and reportedly we've given two Thursday, which is obviously this week, um, uh, to obviously you know, engineer um, a move away uh, from Manchester United. So where is his next destination going to be? Is it going to be in some land or is it going to be a Juventus? I'd like him to go to Juventus, you know, so the Bala could come to Old Trafford as part of the deal, um, but he may not, you know, he could still end up uh, making another move uh, to in some land. So um, anyway, guys, drop your comments, likes, below on the channel. If you do, consider a subscribe, um, as always, and take care. God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching, guys.